set up Hayden in 2016, so it's about a year old. Um, but how it was born initially was probably from myself, just using myself as a case study. So I started off my career in journalism at the age of 16 when I was doing work experience and I got to my first work experience placement which was a women's consumer weekly magazine at the time and noticed very quickly that I was the only ethnic minority and I was the only working class person in the room. And although obviously when you look at me you probably see a mixed race woman, what I've always identified with um, probably more than that is my class because I've always felt in any of those working environments as a journalist as the poor kid, the, the bursary grad, the bursary student kind of thing. So um, when I got there and I realised actually that, that, that that's not by accident, that's actually because I am the one, the, the, I guess the only one at that time it felt like. I just really identified very quickly that it wasn't going to be, it wasn't really about your ambition and your and your enthusiasm to get into the sector. It's actually about how accessible the industry actually was. Because I had all the enthusiasm and determination, but it was still really hard. Um, so at the age of 18, I decided to join forces with seven other students and we set up a youth employment charity called Elevation Networks, which still exists, they've done really well. Um, and our whole focus really at that time was to try and bring graduates that were like us, so from working class, low income households, from different diverse backgrounds, so you know, maybe they come, a young person that's come through the care system or has, has had a cr criminal conviction, just people ge with a disability, people that generally would have had slightly more challenges um, in their upbringing into getting into, into various sectors and I kind of headed up the media piece because that was what I was interested in journalism at the time. And as a result of that I continued to create uh, careers workshops, CV workshops, application form workshops and you know, our, our brand, Shine Media, got around. We started to win some awards for the work we did. Businesses would approach us. Then we started to recruit for grad schemes, internships, apprenticeship schemes, um, all while I was still a, a full-time showbiz journalist and news journalist. And then, before I knew it, over about eight years, we placed over 3,000 people into work at about 40 different companies. So in 2016, I rebranded to Hyden, which was the old English spelling of hidden. And the whole point was about it being us showing employers where all the hidden talent was and since then it's been probably the best year of my life but also the toughest year. There are lots of things that we do at Hyden that make sure that or at least ensure that women can start to see the confidence in their own abilities and that's not to say that they're up against internal biases that go on, they are absolutely and I think even for women from ethnic minority backgrounds they feel like they've got, you know there's that you know the phrase a glass ceiling, they feel like they've got the double glazed glass ceiling because actually if they're an assertive woman based on the fact that they are black or darker skinned they are the aggressive um, older woman, the bossy, older, you know, um, mature and older and uh, experienced women. So rather than seeing them as really brilliant talent, they're seen as these kind of, you know, intimidating uh, women. So I think they also have a challenge. So The Power of You is actually a workshop where we ask them to try and discover what it is about them that brings a value to their business and to use that as something to work on and nurture to be their USP. Because actually, the more time you spend worrying about your male peers and your other female peers who might be competing and up against the same biases as you, the less time you spend actually focusing on what it is that makes you such a great value to your business. So if you work on your weaknesses, you become strong, but if you work on your strengths, you become unique. And once you're unique, you're much more indispensable and people need you a lot more. So I always say to them, don't worry about anything else. If you keep working on what makes you unique, then there'll always be an opportunity for you because as long as there's a need for that, you will be the expert in that area. And actually, when we talk about diversity and representation, it's more about a focus on how many different thoughts do we get around that table? And of those thoughts around the table, how many of those people can really be themselves? Because it's only when someone is truly themselves that we really actually get to see what they can contribute to anything, whether that's innovation, creativity, and the two things that are absolutely vital in the creative industries. So I think it's about, one, women supporting each other, and also having men in on that conversation to say, look, it's not an us and them. It's not for us or against us, it's actually, if we work collaboratively, we can do some incredible things.